Okay, we're going to go really quickly through section 3.4, which is a section called Limits at Infinity in Horizontal Asymptotes. I just want to start off this section with a really uh, a straightforward example. So we want to look at uh, the function, which is uh, it's a rational function, x squared minus 1 in the numerator and x squared plus 1 in the denominator. Here's roughly what the graph of this function looks like if you were to plot it using your calculator. You'd see it would be, well, <clears throat> be at minus 1 here at 0, and then it's going to go like this, like that. And uh, it, this function is symmetric about the y-axis because it doesn't matter if x is positive or negative. Um, two values of, this, of different signs that are equal in absolute value will have the same output for this function, so it's going to look symmetric. So it's going to look something like this. And the thing that you'd notice if you uh, were to if you were to keep looking out as this function as you put input values larger and larger in here is uh, you would notice that there's a horizontal line at the height y equals 1 and the values of the function will be approaching that height y equals 1 if you take larger and larger x values this way and larger and larger negative x values um, that way, so smaller and smaller, but larger in absolute value. Um, this is called a horizontal asymptote because the graph of f approaches y equals 1 as the uh, absolute value of x of x uh, gets large. That is, so this is a <clears throat> this is a trending behavior, and so you'll remember that when we have trending behaviors, um, <clears throat> when you have trending behaviors, uh, we're talking about limits. So what we would write in this case is um, we would write the limit as x goes to, not a number this time, but as x goes to infinity of this function is equal to 1. Okay. We would write that because the trending behavior of the values of the function when x gets very large is um, the, the trending values are to 1. And um, similarly, we would write the limit as x goes to minus infinity, so minus infinity in that direction of this function is also equal to 1. Okay. And, um, and this line here, y equals 1, this is called a horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptote. Okay. That's really all there is to this section, if you understand that. Um, let's just draw some, some pictures. Um, so we, um, we write... Uh, the limit of a function f as x goes to infinity is equal to L if f of x tends to L as the x values become larger and larger. And uh, similarly, so and similarly, we write um, the limit as x goes to minus infinity of f is equal to l if f tends to l as um, x values. and more negative. Okay, we write um, y equals L is uh, the but a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we've got the limit as x goes to infinity equals l, and then the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote. Um, let's just uh, take a look at an example 
um, just a pictorial example, not not an not an example where I write down the function. Um, here's here's a possible picture of a graph with a couple of horizontal asymptotes. So whereas um, whereas a function can have infinitely many vertical asymptotes, uh, a function can only have at most two horizontal asymptotes. So here's a here's a picture of of a function that has two horizontal asymptotes. So this is the graph of f, and uh, <clears throat> and in each of these cases, the limit as x goes to infinity of f. Well, if we take a look, as x goes to infinity, then the trend of the graph is to be at height m, whatever that height is that I've indicated there. And uh, the limit as x goes to minus infinity of this function is equal to l. Okay, so we see when we go in, off in this direction, the trend of the graph is to approach the height l. Notice that a graph can cross its, its asymptotes. So in particular, you could have something that looked like this. We drew a graph of something like this. So this this function here, its trend is going to zero. If we called this thing g of x, maybe the limit as um, as x goes to infinity of g of x is equal to zero, and y equals zero is an asymptote. But but you see the way I drew this graph g, it crosses the asymptote looks like many times in this case. So, so uh, horizontal asymptotes can be crossed in a way that uh, vertical asymptotes uh, cannot be. Okay, so that's um, the definition of a limit and, uh, <clears throat> and horizontal asymptotes. So here's a theorem. If r is any, so r is a positive number uh, and is, if this is any rational number, you know, like an integer or a half, or uh, a third, or three fourths, that sort of thing, um, is any rational number, then the limit as x goes to infinity of one over x to the r is equal to zero. Okay. Examples of this that we might see. So one over x, one over x cubed, one over x to the seventh, 1 over the square root of x, um, 1 over x to the 4 fifths. These all go to 0 as x goes to infinity. Okay, All well, these is x to the half. Um, anytime you see 1 over x to any power, um, it will tend to 0 as x goes to infinity. And that's just because this function here, x to the r, um, it gets larger and larger, no matter what r is. And so if you're looking at the ratio 1 over x to the r, then that ratio will get smaller and smaller. Okay, so similarly, another part of this, this was just an example box. If, um, if x, sorry, if x to the r is defined for negative numbers, then the same thing is true when we look at the, the limit to the negative side. <clears throat> uh, 1 over x to the r is equal to 0 as x goes to minus infinity from the, from, or minus infinity. So these are, this is an important theorem. We'll use this result a great deal. Okay, so let's, let's look at a real example. So let's investigate the limit as x goes to infinity of the following ratio, x squared, 3x squared minus x minus 2 divided by 5x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, so this is so this is a rational function. No idea what its graph looks like, but we want to analyze what its behavior is as x becomes larger and larger. So here's how we do this. We manipulate this in very much the same way that we would manipulate a regular limit. Um, I'm going to pull the highest power of x that I see from the numerator and the denominator and see what happens. So if I, um, if I factor an x squared from the top, then I get 3 
minus 1 over x minus 2 over x squared. Okay, that's what we get if we factor a power of x squared from the, the top of this fraction. And then similarly, let's factor <coughs> the x squared from the bottom. So 5 plus 4 over x plus 1 over x squared. Okay, now, now that we've done that, we can, of course, cancel those two copies of x squareds. And we're just looking at the limit of this fraction here. Now, let's use our previous result. 1 over x is approaching 0 as x goes to infinity. 2 over x squared is approaching 0 as x goes to infinity. Similarly, 4 over x and 1 over x squared are approaching 0 as x goes to infinity. So the limit of this is equal to 3 minus 0 minus 0 over 5 plus 0 plus 0. That's what happens. The, nothing happens to the 3, nothing happens to the 5. All the remaining terms go to 0 because they look like 1 over x to a power or a constant over x to the power. And so this is 3 fifths. So this will approach 3 fifths. Notice that 3 fifths is the ratio of the highest powers here when the power is matched. Okay. So let's um, look at another example. We have the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of 2x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 14. Okay. Another um, ratio here. Um, you might be tempted to say, oh, well, look at the highest power of x here and look at the highest power of x here. There's a 2 and there's a 1, so it's probably 2. Well, in fact, <clears throat> that's that's not quite the reason why this works out as it does. Um, this, the highest power in the top of x is not really x squared. It's x squared, but inside of a square root symbol. So the highest power really is asymptotically. So when x is very large, the highest power in the, of x in the numerator behaves like x. And so um, we're, we're going to make that more rigorous by, um, by pulling an x out of this. So we get, so if I remove... If I remove an x from here, an x is positive, so we'll just take the positive um, out. So we get uh, we get two, and then right here there's nothing. We've removed the x squared, and then right here we have one over x squared inside there. Very good. Um, now the highest power in the top or in the bottom is just x, so we get one plus fourteen over x. Okay. Now again, let's analyze what happens here. 1 plus x squared, that quantity is going to 0. 14 over x, that quantity is going to 0. These two powers of x cancel. And I do want to emphasize that we only got an x from here because it was an x squared inside the square root. So when you factor an x squared out from here and remove it from the square root, you take away the square, it becomes an x. So we get this. So our limit then is the square root of 2 plus 0 over 1 plus 0. So that's the square root of 2. Okay. So this is these two calculations will be key in uh, some of the, the, the problems that we have moving forward. Okay. Another example. Let's take a look at uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of the function sine of x. Okay. Well, what could this be? Well, let's take a look at the graph of sine of x. We know what this graph looks like. It looks like this. It just oscillates back and forth for all time. Okay, and it goes, goes backwards in this direction. This is sine of y equals sine of x. And, and we're asking, what's the trending behavior of this function as x goes to infinity? So what is the trending behavior? Well, there isn't one. No trend. So the limit doesn't exist in this case. Okay, the limit in this case does not exist. Uh, very good. Uh, one more quick... One more quick. We can we can have um, so now we can have we know we can have limits in uh, limits of infinity down <clears throat> down underneath the limit symbol. We can ask what is the trend as x goes to infinity. Um, but we can also 
have limits um, or have infinite limits. So let's um, analyze this limit here. Example: the limit as x go x squared of x squared as x goes to infinity. Well, examine this for just a minute. Here's the graph of x squared. Okay, as we let x go forward in the positive direction, the graph of this function climbs without any sort of bound. And so we uh, express that by saying that the limit of x squared as x goes to infinity is equal to infinity. Okay, so that's, uh, that's an infinite limit. We've encountered infinite limits in, <coughs> in the previous uh, discussion we've had on limits. Uh, that's all for this section.